Hi, it's the 24th of June and we're here at the Ruffham Innovation Centre in Suffolk to have some big kit action. And the topic for today's video is how to set up a combine to maximise performance. And I'm joined today by my special guest, Mr Adam Haywood, who's the Combine Product Manager for Class UK. And we're going to spend a few moments to work out how to maximise performance from your combine this season. Okay, Adam, it's the end of June. Harvest yeah. is uh, fast approaching. Can you give them some tips, please, on setting up the combine for harvesting hybrid barley? We know it's typically the first crop that goes into the combine. What should we be doing? Oh, absolutely. There's all sorts of range of settings on the machine. And there is a factory setting that we can first load up. Um, but from there, we really need to start adjusting. It's a really just a starting point of the factory settings. Uh, it gives us a, a good base level to work from, and then we can work from there. So lots of variables, whether it be moisture in the crop, uh, the yield as well, varieties, uh, also weather, uh, all sorts play into factor when setting up the machine. But essentially what we're trying to do is get the best quality in the grain tank and the least amount on the ground for the most efficient way possible. So there's always going to be a compromise when setting up um, a, a combine. It's not specific that we're going to say exactly set up the machine this way and it will perform. There's lots and lots of different settings. So for example, uh, drum speed is probably the biggest player when it comes to barley. Um, we often get asked questions, where do I set my drum speed? Now, most people will set up at 750 RPM and work up, work down from there. Drum speed can also do the most damage in the combine. Driving around the country in the last couple of weeks, we've seen a bit of lodging. Adam, what's the best way to set up the machine to harvest lodge crops? Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, we do face those conditions quite regularly, um, but there is um, various parts of the machine. For example, crop lifters. The big goal is to get it actually in the machine. We don't want to be leaving it on the ground. Um, so we need to be cutting low to the ground, but also not too low that we're bulldozing and pushing the crop forward. So we're actually cutting it nicely and laying it in. So crop lifters, there's a lot of different types of crop lifters, um, various heights, and also depending on what crop you're doing, but especially in barley, we don't want to be pushing too low to the ground. Problem is the, the crop lifter will lift and actually not pick up the crop. So you need an optimum balance actually of the cutting height so that the lifter is performing its best. That's one part actually getting it in so the, the lifter can help. But then we also need to feed it into the machine as well, which can also be difficult. So there's lots of things that we can adjust, a huge amount of setup on the cutter bar, whether it be scrapers on the auger, auger height, the speed of the auger, and also the reel position has a massive play on feed of the machine as well. When we're looking at the elevator as well, there's the height of the elevator, also the speed of the elevator can also be adjusted, but also there is a plate on the top of the feeder house that we can remove to help with feed as well. So there's lots of adjustment on the actual cutter bar itself to help with feed in laid crops. Adam, can you give us any advice on how to minimise losses in this crop to reduce volunteers in subsequent crops? Um, so drum speed being a big influencer on quality, whether it be cracked or also awns on the sample as well. So when we're looking at drum speed, too high a drum speed can result in damage, but too low a drum speed, we also get too many awns in the sample. So not enough separation, not enough threshing of the machine. So it's a real balance between cracked and also uh, losses of the machine as well is drum speed. Um, it's a real setup. The other part of the threshing system is the concave adjustment. So the distance between the threshing drum and also the concave gap, very important. It changes dramatically between um, different crops as well. So tight concave setting generally at the start of the season when it's a bit tough to get a better threshing uh, component of the machine. Wider generally at the end of the season when we're getting a, a bigger uh, amount of a crop for the, for the machine as well. So it is very variable. And if we look behind us and see awns coming into the grain tank, how should we set the machine up to handle that? Yeah, absolutely. So it's generally from uh, not threshing enough uh, awns, so it's still remaining part of the plant. It needs to be threshed a little bit harder. Now, there's other ways of uh, increasing the threshing. We can increase the drum speed. We can close the concave gap. We can also put deawning plates in, so holding the crop in there longer, so getting a more threshing. We can also put intensive threshing bars in. That gives a mechanical section of the concave a bit more aggression to help rub the awns off in those conditions. That's not always we need all of those combination. It could be one or two things that will fix it. it it's, it's also situational. Uh, all over the country is different. So we don't say put the deawning plates in here and that will fix it. It's very situational to the crop in front of you. And if you were to give us three top tips for setting up this machine, what would they be? Okay, top three tips for harvesting uh, this year. Firstly, 
factory settings are just a starting point. Uh, don't think there is an absolute guide, you must stick to them. They're a very good starting point and you work from there. Um, we quite commonly find that people will stick to those and do the whole harvest. Second one, sample. So big determination of how the machine is performing, if it's threshed enough or you're damaging. And then also thirdly is losses. Get out, have a look and determine where the loss is from. It, it also determines how the machine is set up depending on the losses. So in summary, there are a number of things that you can do to optimize combine performance. And just remember, it's the yield in the tank that you get paid for. See you next time.